All right. We begin with this um, order from uh, d -d 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 what's it called? Crunchy Munchy uh, Crunchy Roll. This should be the limited edition version of the Great Pretender. Not the movie, you know, if you go to Amazon and search for it, you find the movie, but the anime. Alright. trick is, this feels bigger than I was expecting, but I don't know. No, that appears to be right. Okay, cool. And then we also have the other anime that arrived this week. You know, One Piece being a high priority watch, so that one's already been opened. But let's um start from here. So what can we say about this? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Japanese and English. So it's got an English dub. Japanese with English subtitles. Okay. Cool. Oh, and uh, that's a region A there. Let's get this open. This is definitely heavier than I was expecting, but it's kind of nice. Let's not go too far with that, but first take a look at all of this. What else is there to look at? Guess the contents. I, I almost wonder if I want to take a look at um, this a bit more because I'm. I guess I'm not quite sure what this is. Is it a series of movies? I guess. sequence I'm not really sure I don't think I don't feel like I'm getting much of an answer in that regard from the, the things but I, I guess we'll just take a look what's this in here case one Los Angeles connection okay And this would be case two. Singapore Sky. Yeah, this is feeling like a series of movies. Guess I don't know much about this show. That's a show of London, okay. Looks a little unexpected somehow. And then uh, case four point one and Wizard of Far East. And this would be four dot two Wizard of Far East. So two movies. Could also be a TV series and they just broke it up by the arcs. There we go. So a little catty one. Plus maybe that's fine. I don't know. Interesting. And then we got extras. First off, we got this book. Just do it. This is all art. Wow. That's actually pretty cool. I would have expected it to be a mix of stuff, but no. It's all art. Hmm. I almost don't want to open this. this. I mean, this isn't in plastic. Instead, it's wrapped shut with 
this, if I take this off, I'll never put it back in. I guess the same would happen with plastic, but, hmm. You know what? I think for y'all, I should take a look at what's in here. Because we've got a lot of interesting stylized art. But it feels like these say the personality of the show a bit more. And hopefully I'm not skipping any. I guess that's a person there. Okay. Okay, so these are like the Hollywood signs and people doing stuff around those. Yeah, that is a W. Okay. Hmm. And finally we have this, which I think is actually a folded up poster. Like that last... No, no, no. It's not like the last... This is animated series, which makes me think of the series. Although I do wonder if they could be meaning series of movies, but huh, I don't know. And last but not least, let's see if we can put this back in here. This stuff is awfully tight. So it's barely fitting in the box. Let's begin by taking this out. See if this even fits. I think it fits. It was mostly a question of if it... Let's... Do it this way. Let's... Get the first Blu-ray out. Then I... Work on putting all this stuff in. That feels like it's not going to go right. <sighs> oh well. Hopefully y'all are getting some enjoyment of watching me juggle this limited edition set. And then if we get these in, then we can squeeze it all shut with that. Perfect. Then we got One Piece Season 13 Voyage 6, which is obviously already open. You know, because this was a high priority watch. Now I don't think there's a lot to it. It's looked the same ever since, you know, a long time ago, especially once One Piece moved to Blu-ray. Next up, we've got uh, Akiba Made Wars, I believe. Akiba Made War. Singulars. Hmm. There we go. Very tenacious plastic. Uh, okay, what can we see about them? I see a region A. So there is an English dub. Um, contents, it should be like 12 episodes, 300 minutes. That's a 12 episodes on two discs, yes. One of those discs escaped. There we go. Next up, The Legendary Hero is Dead. This was one of those shows that I watched as it came out. Uh, let's see. Regions A and B. So anybody wanting to import it can. You know, from Europe, that is. That's a lot of dubs. Jesus. English, French, German, Japanese. Subs in English, French, and German. Always nice that it's different underneath the slip cover. I think you feel this still a little bit of plastic there. It's taunting me very annoyingly. 
I guess that's close enough. Pretty much our main two characters. Ah. Oh, and then I guess this is last but not least, uh, Suzume. This is a limited edition release version. I feel like right there is where I can get in the plastic. Postcards, but let's take a look at the back here. That's a uh, region A. Audio English and Japanese. So this has a uh, dub and sub. I don't know. Should I do this first? I don't know. It's here. It's let's give it a shot. Come on, open up. Plastic is just not giving me room to grab. I just need a little bit to get this started. Looks like it only got the back. Oh my god. There we go. Now we can look at postcards. Very nice. Now we take a look at this very pretty box set. Is that not the top? No, it's not. Because it's designed to open like that. Huh. Probably it's supposed to not even open like that. It's supposed to open like that. There we go. Very familiar looking imagery because some of us was on those postcards. Cool beans. Let's see, can I put this in here? Oh, I can. And then I can put that there and that there. Then we'll have the Blu ray plus DVD here. Which I don't think we need to look at the back. We already determined stuff. Definitely not. So it's different underneath the slip cover. So probably. That would be the version that you would see if you didn't buy the limited edition version. Hold on. I'm pretty sure this is a movie, so what are all these different discs? This is a feature film on Blu-ray. Okay. This is probably the feature film on DVD. Nice, nice. This is extras. Bonus features. Blu-ray. A lot of interesting, colorful art in there. Um, let's see, can I verify real quick before I put this away? Uh, I think it's maybe Makoto Shinkai. Hmm, it's not. Makoto Shinkai, yeah. Your name and weathering with you. Other. Fancy stuff, but no. Anyways, this is actually a pretty good update this week. Here's this week's physical and anime collection update. All right, let's try and begin with uh, One Piece Season 13 Voyage 6. Did I even say the name properly when I opened it? Anyways, um, the point is, you know, this was obviously already open because it was a high priority watch with my Friday friend. So we obviously didn't watch any um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, we did watch all of this. I'm trying to think if I've got anything to comment on other than while it does do neat things in the moment from here to there, it does feel kind of exhausting because it feels like as a story it just maybe kind of keeps going but the real problem is it kind of keeps changing to... I 
And I don't know. As many neat things as there are in there, it's, um... I guess it's hard to say what exactly I feel going through all of this, but, you know, it's, it's okay stuff. Um, but just a little exhausting. I don't look back on any individual part of it and say I wish that didn't happen, but, I don't know, it's just been exhausting. Uh, let's see, I also watched the first three episodes of The World is Still Beautiful. Mostly because it was like a YouTube um, channel that shows like clips from stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, that that, that I mean, it's been a, in my ta one of my tabs to try and watch. I've been curious about it, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep watching it. Um, I think the biggest problem with it is, well, there's nothing about it that's necessarily bad. I, I think the, oh, yeah, I wouldn't call that thing bad. Um, it did still commit the biggest sin of one of the characters just not clicking with me and it's an important character. In, a, in other words, the male lead. And I think the problem really comes down to uh, shoujo shows, which I'm not sure if this is strictly under that category, but I'm guessing it is. Um, it's not uncommon for them to be tempted towards making the male love interest perfect but also flawed and that contradiction it, it comes with risk and I think you know usually it pays off and for this character it mostly pays off but it's still one of those things where it's just sort of like okay they're introducing that he has some of these flaws but I kind of feel like those flaws would not make for somebody who can take over the world because I think they gave the impression that under his rule, a lot of other countries have now come under his rule and he's basically ruler of the world. Whereas the kingdom was maybe powerful but not necessarily ruler of the world. And it's possible I am I just completely misunderstood what I was saying, but because it keeps kind of leaning in that direction, it's like I would admit that he's a pretty good person but a lot of these flaws they have would make me think that things would collapse well before something would happen. But it just made up kind of this perfect thing. And you know, plenty of shows are actually watchable despite doing stuff like that. It, I think it's one of the complaints I've had about, like, season one of Rising of the Shield Hero, which I also felt very engaging, but it's like, there's something about Raph Talia and, um... Great, I'm, I'm forgetting what's her name. They're a little too perfect for what our character needs. And that, that, that it kind of unsettles me a little bit. And this one doesn't unsettle me, it just... Is preventing me from clicking with him, per se. I guess this is a minor nitpick, but when she sings, it's a little too pop idol-ish. Like, if it was kind of just her voice, I feel like it would have been actually pretty expertly done. But because it's gone full pop idol, I don't know. It feels a little artificial to me. None of it's necessarily really that bad, but it's... Interesting because it kind of means two powerful things of the show aren't clicking. Now that said, I really like her as a main character. I also can't help but think that maybe she was ever so slightly inspired uh, by a Princess Nausicaa from Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Um, I guess a couple of things I'd say that are mostly just a couple of the angles and the fact that she's literally always wearing those earrings, which... They're not exactly the same as the kind that Nausicaa's wearing, but they're very reminiscent of it. And, you know, her hair color and outfit color feel like they could be kind of reminiscent of some scenes from Nausicaa. With obviously different character designs, but... Um, well, that stuff is, is a little subtle, but there's maybe also this element of pragmatism to her. Like, Nausicaa was a princess who was always doing hard labor with absolutely everybody else and, you know, kind of being the leader who's doing things with you. And while this character doesn't strike me as being specifically that, she does feel a little bit closer to that than you might have otherwise expected, which, you know, just leads to that, that hypothesis, that feeling. Um... So, you know, overall, I don't know if I'm going to watch more or not. I, It's tricky because I don't know how much of a draw I feel, and I'm, I was just kind of exhausted over the weekend. But, you know, thoughts. Uh, Villainous Level 99, Episode 10. 
I'm trying to remember what happened at the very end of the episode because, like I commented before, it was possible that the way episode 9 ended, they could have been setting something up that could have been a um, crescendo. Maybe of the core, maybe of the season. But they... I, I guess they didn't quite do that. They definitely set up, set up some interesting stuff. And what happened in this episode was stuff that I kind of was like, oh man, I've been waiting a long time to see some of this. It's uh, entertaining. But now I'm blanking on what happened at like the very end of it, which if there was a stinger or something, that might have been setting up for maybe a crescendo. So I don't remember. But yeah, interesting pieces of information. Uh, Gushing Over Magical Girls, episode 11. Um, you know, not playing it as strongly as I would have hoped, but I still felt like what happened in the episode is... enough along the lines of what I would have wanted to happen that it was entertaining. I think there's one more episode left. We're getting close to a lot of episodes, but if that was a core crescendo that might be decent and I'm curious to see if the next episode is the last one what it does. I, 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 I know I knew how many episodes it was a little bit ago if it was 12 or 13. If it's 13, there could be one final confrontation maybe that'd be a series finale or a strange one. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, Classroom of the Elite Season 3 Episode 11 Maybe a little underwhelming, maybe? Or maybe just whelming? It, it was a good confrontation. That's a bit of an, a season finale sort of thing that Classroom of the Elite would do, but I, I guess, you know, they can't always keep doing the same thing every time, I guess. And I don't know. There's a, the blah, 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 blah. Um, kind of interesting stuff, but also sort of maybe feeling convenient. I don't know. So, I, I, maybe underwhelming isn't quite... Maybe it's just whelming. It's not overwhelming. It's not underwhelming. It's just eh, fine, I guess. Dr. Elise, uh, the Royal Lady with the Lamp, episode 10. What just happened in this one? I guess some entertaining stuff. I'm trying to feel... I guess this episode doesn't feel like it's playing terribly strongly with its main premise, but it is still playing with the important elements to it, so it could be setting up for something important about to happen. But It seems like they're going to make that maybe the finale of the season. Should be interesting. Uh, Delicious in Dungeon, episode 11. Um, actually, a pretty great episode, I would say. You know, it's... It's a lot of stuff, and I think, you know, the next episode would be a crescendo. I mean, this one was a bit of a crescendo. This was the big action part of it, and now we're... The next episode, we're going to see what comes immediately after that. And I have to say that, you know, I'm curious. I'm, I'm interested. I do believe it's designed to be longer than a one core. I think uh, it was listed as two core at the, at the website I used. So hopefully Netflix is planning to bring season or core two or whatever um, as it comes out um, in the upcoming. I think they only listed 12 episodes, but it's it's been nice enough. I would definitely be interested in seeing where they're going to go after this. Although I maybe the way they end this core will make me think otherwise. But I don't think so. Minds and Death Ability, episode 11. I don't know. Uh, maybe okay stuff. Kind of some interesting insight to our main character and kind of crazy stuff happening, but... Beyond that, um... I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Guess I'm curious to see how it's going to end, because... There's been some important stuff put into play, I guess. Sasaki and Peeps, episode 11. Uh, whatever they set up does not feel like it was supposed to be a core ending uh, crescendo. 
entertaining enough stuff, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to feel like it's going to wrap up or anything like that. So hopefully it's not planned to be a single core. I should probably check that stuff out. I guess I didn't see it airing next season, so this core is at least airing and finishing now, I guess. The Unwanted Undead Adventure, Episode 11. Entertaining stuff. Still not sure if that one's leading up to any kind of crescendo, but it's been fun. Free Run, Beyond Journey's End, Episode 27. I felt like this episode was a nice episode. There would be elements of it that I can say, now hold on just a second, but I think given with all the theming it's playing with, it feels like it did the right thing. And it didn't feel like it got too buried in, oh, let's tell another character's backstory. It felt like it stayed a little bit more relevant to what our characters are going through right now, which was good because the other stuff was getting a little exhausting. But, nice episode. The Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic, episode 11. Pretty exciting episode. Um, I think uh, Crescendo really set up there. And maybe surprisingly well executed. It's like I wasn't quite sure how well it would be, but you know, it was actually quite satisfying. Now the unfortunate thing is it does mean that most of the series was pretty much building up to this one point, but whatever, what can you do? The Weakest Tamer began a journey to pick up trash, episode 10. Really nice stuff. Um, if there's anything, I, th I think it's something I've already complained about where there really could just be more of our main character finding their way, whereas it does seem to be in the middle of an important story. Which is good, but it's also, um, you know, could just be um, that. Hmm. I was trying to think, but uh, I think that comment actually goes from another anime. Um, Solo Leveling, Episode 10. I thought this was also a pretty good episode. Like, it didn't show a lot of action, but a lot of the building that it had to do it had to do with our main character and maybe in his place in the world and seeing interesting stuff build up because of that. And it's even more than just what they showed in here because they kind of imply that, okay, he's also... Um, <clears throat> being exposed to this person that his sister knows, which means, you know, there's potential juicy drama that can happen because of that sort of stuff. So it's not as, oh yeah, here's an S-Rank just so that you can keep track of the S-Ranks. I don't feel like we need to do that. So overall, I thought it was a good episode 10. Uh, Strongest Tank, episode 11. Hmm, okay stuff. You know, this one they're definitely setting up for a crescendo to happen in the next episode, I think. We'll have to see if it's great. You know, as it is, what happened was okay enough. Maybe just a little bit too, um... Everybody just likes our main character too much, I guess. Or they're just too wowed by everything he does. Maybe. But not necessarily to the point of being unwatchable. It was just... Like... Come on, people do things and entertaining, I guess. Uh, Tales of Wedding Rings, episode 11. Um, I think some of what I felt like was going to happen. Uh, the elements of it were there and it was interesting and entertaining and it seems to be properly setting up for the next episode to potentially finish the series and if it does again I think it might be good. We'll just have to see how it executes this last episode assuming there's only one more episode. Fluffy Paradise episode 12. I do believe this, is, this was the last episode of this uh, course or season or whatever it is. Which basically means it's one less thing to watch on Sunday. Hmm. I, think, I, I don't know if that's something to think about or not. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I guess it was okay, an okay enough ending. You know, lots of stuff. It's not finished in any stretch of the imagination, but for, you know, the stuff it was doing that was important near the end there, it was good enough, I thought. Hopefully there's another core season or something later. Banished from the Heroes Party, Season 2, Episode 11. Them setting up the confrontation that we were all pretty sure was going to happen, I think. And I have to say that the way it was executed was pretty decent. It was not 
unreasonable. It easily could have felt that way, but it wasn't. So I'm definitely interested to see what it does in the last episode. I think the next episode is the last episode. So maybe the next episode. I'm definitely interested to see what it does for the next episode. And if it comes to a satisfying conclusion, because that's a very real possibility. Seventh Time Loop, Episode 11. Entertaining enough stuff. I almost wonder if what they're setting up for the end is actually, interestingly, something that Weakest Tamer also kind of brought up. And it's kind of funny, because it's like, well, not a lot of anime bring that up, but when there's two of them doing it, that's kind of funny. But we'll have to see, because it hasn't done that yet. It is setting up for a major crescendo. We'll just have to see how well it works, because if there's any problem, it's that it's not leveraging the fundamental premise strongly enough to say, oh, yes, this show is totally that. It was definitely doing that very well in the first half. Second half, hard to say, because I guess we haven't seen anything that's like, oh, that's a payoff for seeing the show do that thing. It has a couple things that are almost just like going through the motions. We'll have to see if it all comes together. <clears throat> Tsukumichi, Moonlight Fantasy, Season 2, Episode 11. And I thought this was a pretty fun episode. A um, Interesting things happened. Uh, some of the comment that was... Combat, sorry, not comment. Some of the combat was actually quite entertaining. You know, not, not very stakes-high sort of combat, but entertaining stuff to see anyways like yeah I thought it was pretty cool now the real question is is the show going to do anything with the stuff it's been setting up one of the reasons season one was so beloved I think is because at the end of season one you kind of felt like that was a build up of a lot everything they had kind of set up to that point so it's a good notable checkpoint I would say I'm not sure if season two has had that feeling yet, but it is a bit of a longer season as well. So we'll have to see. But it's at least been entertaining, if not like, oh, here's a moment of pure awesome followed by another one an episode or two later. You know, it feels a little more relaxed than that, but not bad. And then finally, it is time for Torture Princess, episode 11. Um entertaining enough episode. I feel like it. this one got close to kind of covering some I guess comedic material it sort of had done before. Like another character existed in order to do that, but you know, it was a good setup for, oh, and then after that fun thing. So, you know, entertaining enough. Once again, a good way to just kind of end things. So let's see, outside of that, is there anything else to really comment on? I don't know, so, some Dead by Daylight stuff, I guess. Uh, I finally played as the new killer that would have come out last week after the update. And eh, he's surprisingly more fun to play than I would have thought because his, the way his power was described felt a little janky, I guess. But it feels like you have some options where you don't have to play that way. And I say he... But I, I use the cheerleader version, so maybe she... You know, it's, it's a little more ambiguous. It's probably really a gender, I guess, because it's really a thing. It's unknown. It takes on whatever something, something rumors. But, you know, overall, fun enough. I've got that one already up to Prestige 3, so its perks are unlocked on everybody else. And I've um, started working on Sable, but in order to do that one, I really need to start playing the new event. You know, that one also comes with free Rift. Good stuff. I feel like uh, I'm going to finish this Rift stuff as long as I get a chance to play. But, you know, over the weekend I had a nephew's birthday party, and so I was, uh, you know, a little exhausted from doing that, I guess. Because that was also the same day where I had to do, um, um, Sorry, I'm blanking. Uh, laundry. I had to do laundry, and then I also visited my parents to check up on them, and you know, a lot of cooking ended up happening Sunday night. Uh, a little exhausting, but whatever. Oh, I guess I also played some Super Smash Brothers this week to unlock all the Mii Fighter outfits. Maybe I was talking about that last week, and I did complete that. And I... Well, there's one that's still locked, and that's the one that requires me to clear Classic on 9.9. .9. I'm not trying that hard. But I did 
do the one where I have to survive the first stage of the final battle with Ganondorf without dying. And then I proceeded to then finish it without um, dying at all. So that turned out pretty nice. Hmm. Huh. But outside of that, I don't know. I don't know if I have anything to really talk about. Other than congratulations to my brother, him, him and his wife. They finally moved into a bigger place. They're going to start unpacking. So if any of y'all were watching me on... Um, on Tesla tries uh, Twitch stream, then you know we might try to do something. Depends on whether or not she has her streaming setup up, or if we're just gonna play some Lethal Company. Not they're finally in a state where they're unpacking and you know, they'll be looking for excuses to wind down. We'll have to see how Thursday goes because that's also when the uh, company's celebrating Holi. That's a India holiday. I think that's the Festival of Colors, but I guess maybe when. No, maybe it's another one. I keep forgetting. I should remember this better, but I keep forgetting. Anyways, it's all stuff. I can't think of anything else to really chat about, so hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all, have a nice week.